think that was the, you know, she kind of rewrote it. For this, you know, like thing like that. When you recorded Metamorphosis um, and picked those pieces to record, how involved were you with the composers during the process of the recording? Um, actually, not so involved in the actual recording, but prior to the recording. Um, even the arrangements that I made, there's an arrangement of a Philip uh, Glass piece called Metamorphosis. Um, that's really in five movements, and I just recorded one of them on the CD. But um, I told Philip, I mean, I asked Philip if I could do it to begin with, you know, and he said, sure, you know, it was because I was working with Melissa Finley, the dancer, and she had done a piece to the piano version of Metamorphosis that Philip had written. And I really liked the piece, and so I thought, oh, I wonder if there's some way I can do this for cello. And it was in this period where I was really experimenting with looping cellos a lot. I, and I, I mean, I still do that a lot, where I just have layers of cello. But, um, so I thought, well, you know, maybe it'd be possible to do it for four cellos, which is what I ended up um, arranging it for. And so for the recording, I played all four parts, which is was a challenge in some ways because I didn't want to use a click track because I didn't want it to sound rigid. I wanted to have the freedom and the flow that it had when Philip would play it on the piano. And so I had to, that was the hardest part about the recording. I just had to figure out how to do that. And so basically I started with a, this um, eighth note bass line and just, you know, you just have to imagine the other parts when you're playing it so that you can, you know, feel the phrasing of the top line, essentially just put on top of it. But, um, but Philip, and then Philip heard uh, the, a performance of the piece before I recorded it, too. So that was really good. So I knew that it was fine with Philip. And I played so much of this music in the past that that also helped. You know, after you work with a composer for a while, you, you really get an idea of how they hear things and, um, you know, what their interests are, I guess, or what's important to them, and I'll hopefully see out. So, um, so that really helps a lot. And then certain pieces, like Mark Gray's piece, he wrote specifically for me. So we worked very intensely together as he was writing the piece, and then, um, and actually he was in the recording studio when we did it as well, because it involves um, a computer, and so, he, because he worked so much with computers, and so he was there operating the computer, essentially, while I was recording. So that was probably the most intense relationship in the studio, was with Mark. And, um, all the other composers, you know, I, I had worked with, uh, Karen Tanaka, um, actually she gave me that piece, uh, she didn't write it for me, but she gave me the music to it, um, my very last tour to Japan with Chronos, and she was there, and um, so she thought I might be interested in the piece, and so she gave it to me then, and, but it took several years before then I actually performed it and then recorded it. Um, but again, same thing, you know, she was available, and you know, I could call her and ask her questions about it, and, um, she could explain it to me, but there were a lot of times, that's a piece that's really um, <coughs> um, spatially notated. So you have a time frame, you have a bar, <coughs> you have a time frame of say um, five seconds, and so you can play that material within that time frame. But, um, and it's actually more exact than it sounds. It's really almost like it's written out. But, um, so I needed help with that, for instance. So she and that's also with a um, pre-recorded track that came from her. So, um, you know, so I had to get that material from her and then start working with it. So every case was, you know, slightly different. But, um, and then I have one piece of mine that's on there. Um, so that would be easy. <laughs>
<laughs> I know how I want that to go. You brought a lot of music tonight. Is there a piece that you well, an example? I almost thought, I wonder if um, we should play, I mean, is Larry here too from Fly by Fly? Because now, Larry was really uh, helpful to me. <coughs> when I left Carnelton, I started improvising. A lot of my friends who are composers said, well, if you start improvising pretty soon, you're probably going to start composing. And that's exactly what happened in my case. I mean, you know, you'd be improvising, and I'd like an idea that I would come up with. And because I came from such a tradition of written out music, the easiest way for me to remember it was to write it out. And so that's basically what happened. And then, and then eventually, I just started writing more and more. Um, but a lot of, you know, Larry was really helpful because he sort of like pushed me out of the nest <laughs> in a way <laughs> and um, had me start uh, playing with me and my Kyoko who plays the Koto and, and Larry playing saxophone and um, we did a bunch of stuff together and this CD is part of it. What do you want to play? I don't know. What do you think? Well, they're, they're all pretty long, except for the first one. We uh, don't maybe we should just play part of one. We could just play part of Yeah. Well, I don't know. I guess but maybe what we would do. I would say first one. Maybe it's part of the first one. You can know. All right. Well, you can know. Yeah. Well, it might have gone for...